All right, let's start talking about deformers. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my tool palette here, grab a cube 3D, drag it onto my canvas, go into edit mode, turn on polyframe. I'm going to go ahead and select matcap gray just so you guys can see these lines better. And then make sure you go into make poly mesh 3D. Now this original primitive doesn't really matter what you choose. I'm just starting with a cube. And then we're going to hit W and we're going to go into this gear icon. And you see we have a lot new, a lot of new deformers in here. Uh, you might remember some old favorites from 4R8, like your Ben Dark, your Ben Curve, your Deformer. Um, I think Extender and Multi Slice was also in there. Uh, but there's a bunch of new ones in here. I'm going to go over most of them. So most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll cover ones that I think are interesting. Uh, but the one I'm going to start with is Re, uh, I'm sorry, Project Primitive. This one is the most complex. It has the most options. So if I figure if we start here, we master project primitive, then everything else is just downhill from here. So let's go ahead and select project primitive, and that's going to put us into project primitive mode. And you're going to see we have two bounding boxes. One is kind of hard to see. It actually fits this cube perfectly, because the bounding box of the cube actually matches the bounding box of the former. And then we have a smaller bounding box in here. You can see it's kind of ghosted right in here, this little cube. If I move this up, you're going to see what it's doing is basically projecting this sphere, which is what this primitive is by default. So if I scale the sphere up, I just by scaling it in the middle, you'll see we're projecting the sphere through the topology of that underlying cube here. Now, if I drag this up and out, it's eventually going to switch over once it passes that midpoint into a subtractive kind of Boolean right here. So if I turn off this polyframe, you can just see instead of going into polyframe mode, you're going to be able to see what it's doing to the underlying geometry. Now, if I continue to drag this out, if I drag it in, it wants to project this sphere out. Once that bounding box passes that midpoint, it's going to switch over to a cut in. And if I keep dragging it out, eventually it's going to leave the surface entirely and have no effect whatsoever. So now you can see the original bounding box is down here with the original object, and my new bounding box is way up here. My original bounding box has a global setting, so all of these cones right here, which we'll get to all of them, uh, are global, and then these are object specific. So these are pertaining to this particular object. If I, again, if I drop this back down, now we're going to project this sphere through here. So if I drop my sphere into the object, or I can go into the gear and I can hit reset, and that'll shoot it right back down to the middle. And if you want to, you can even do full reset, and that'll We'll get into this later, but it'll switch it all the way back and reset it completely to just the default settings. So now that we have the sphere, as we drag the sphere up, it's going to start projecting through this underlying cube. And as I continue to grow this, you're going to see it's actually going to start pinching in where that cube is kind of holding back. Now, the reason the sphere doesn't overtake it completely is we're going to start with this option right here. It's blend. Our blend is set to 0.29. So if I hover over any of these options, you're going to see this orange one is modifier. This yellow one's primitive type. This one right here is primitive axis. And then over here we have blend, new surface, and accept. Again, this bigger bounding box is our object bounding box. It used to be smaller, now it's bigger. Here's our original, so these are global settings, and then here's our project object specific. Again, if we do a full reset, it'll shoot it right back down to where it was originally. Then we can scale out. Now, if I scale out just a little bit, you're gonna see it's kind of morphing between a sphere and a cube. However, if I take this blend at 0.29 and I drag it down to zero, you're gonna see that sphere is completely overtaking the cube. And if I drag it the other way, so 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, you're gonna see we're getting very little influence on the sphere, but more influence on the original object. So you can use blend to determine how much influence your deformer has over your original object. Um, you can also hold down shift on any of these and you can snap incrementally. So instead of going from like 4.47 to 0.76, you can hold down shift and just snap to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. I'm going to go ahead and change that to zero. So now this sphere has total influence over the underlying object. Now, if I'm just barely breaching the surface of my original cube, you're going to see it's still projecting. It just has a harsher transition because we're not blending between the two. Now, if I scale this down again and we move it up, you're going to notice if I go to the side here and you can hold down shift to snap it to the side in your uh, ZBrush navigation. As I pull this up, as soon as this midpoint right here crosses over the threshold of that object, 
And you can see as I, as I drag up, it's getting really badly tessellated. However, when I let go, it should reevaluate that surface here and we can change the tessellation higher as needed to. I will get to that later. But as I cross over that threshold, and it'll start going inwards into a uh, cut in shape. So you can kind of use this as either an additive or a subtractive Boolean if you want. And you'll always be able to go through here and change the scale. And you, of course you can non-uniformly scale this and there's some other options in here we'll get to in a bit, but you can add or cut into a mesh like this. Now, if I continue to drag this out eventually, this bounding box for my shape is going to completely leave the bounding box for my original object and it's going to have no more influence on it. It's still there. Um, in fact, if you want to see it, there's another option over here called new surface. Right now, new surface is set at zero. It's this purple one. If you're colorblind, it's the second cone back in this corner option here. And right now it's set to zero. When it's set to zero, it's going to project in or project out of an underlying surface. If you take that and set that to any other value other than zero, so just click it and drag and say set it to one, now it's just gonna be its own surface. Now it's gonna behave like an insert mesh brush, basically. You have a primitive here and you can move it in your object, out of your object, but it's always going to be a separate new surface. Now you can continue to stack these deformers, but before we get there, um, I'm just gonna go over the different shapes we can make and then we'll go over how to string these deformers together and make interesting new objects. So let's take this new surface here. We'll go back down to zero and we'll project this primitive, or we can just go back here and say full reset, shoot it back down to the middle. Go ahead and scale this up and let's go ahead just temporarily. I'm gonna get rid of this blend. So I'm just gonna drag that to zero. And now we just have oops, our full uh, shape here. And one more thing I should mention real quick since we went over blended. Uh, if I bring this back down in, it's only, blend is only gonna be available when the new surface is set to zero or it's set to project and influence a mesh. If you ever set this to say one or two, that blend disappears because there is no blending this object with another one unless, of course, it's going to blend and project with this object here. But again, we're gonna go ahead and scale this up so it encompasses that entire object there. Mm -hmm. 